hello guys you're welcome back to my channel if you're new here you're welcome today's video i'll be showing you guys on how i made this beautiful luxury booboo with front inverted plates it is very easy to make i used four yards of mikado fabric mixed with damax to achieve this style so if this is what you would love to learn how to make please sit back relax and enjoy the tutorial and if you are yet to subscribe to my channel click the red button down below to subscribe and also click the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you will be notified so without further ado let's move right to the tutorial on the table, I have leftover Damax fabric and four yards of Mikado fabric. The four yards, I folded it into two and I ironed it very well. I ironed the whole four yards. I folded it into two and I give it a very good press. From the starting line, I impute neck width four inches, neck depth for the back one and a half inches. From the center back to where the sleeve will stop, I measured 24 inches. At that point, I measured 2 inches for the shoulder slope and I connect it to the neck with The sleeve is a puff sleeve. At this point, you can impute any measurement of your choice. I impute 20 inches for the wideness of the sleeve. For the puff sleeve, I impute 20 inches. Shoulder to my hip line is 25 inches. Shoulder to the M of my dress is 65 inches, including aiming allowance. My actual length is 63 inches, then folding allowance at the hem 2 inches, making it 65 inches. That is why I always impute 65 inches. On the hip line, I impute my hip measurement divided by 4 plus 5 inches. Total measurement is 18 inches. On the M line, I impute my hip measurement divided by 4 plus 3 inches. Total measurement on the hemline is 16 inches so from the 18 inches on the hip line i slant it to meet the 16 inches on the hem line then i curve the armhole of the sleeve to the bodies For the side slits, I normally measure between 17 to 18 inches from the M line. I will measure it upward and mark it. So when I'm cutting the bodies, I'm going to notch it. I added shoulder seam half inch. that's about it guys for the drafting as you can see it is very easy as you can see i have not cut the bodies out yet 
I'm going to remove the back bodies and continue with the front bodies. I'll, I will later place the back bodies on top of the front bodies and cut them together. Please note, I forgot to tell us this from the beginning. Before you will draft your back bodies, you will first of all measure the wideness of the fabric you want to use. For example, the wideness of mine four yards is 29 inches. Then you will ask yourself, the inverted pleat for the front bodies, how wide do you want the pleat to be? For example, mine is 5 inches. I use 5 inches. So you will measure the amount of the pleat, that is the wideness of the pleat you want the front bodies to have. You will first of all measure it from the fabric. What I am measuring now is 5 inches. So after measuring the 5 inches, you will rule that into a straight line. Then from that straight line, you will now measure what you have left after the 5 inches. For example, my total wideness of the fabric, I told you guys, is 29 inches. Some Mikado fabric, you will see 28 inches. Some, you will see 27 inches. So, after folding it into two and ironing it, before you trap the back bodies, measure the measurement of your fabric. Then, ask yourself, how wide do you want the front pleat to be? For example, I want mine to be 5 inches. And I've marked 5 inches. I'm going to rule the dotted lines into a straight line. So after marking the 5 inches, what I have left for the front bodies is 24 inches. Because I've already marked 5 inches for the inverted pleat. So when I'm drafting on my back bodies, that is why I used 24 inches for the sleeve length from my center back to where the sleeve will stop 24 inches because what I have left for the front bodies is 24 inches after marking out 5 inches away from it. I hope you guys understand the explanation. So after ruling the straight line now, I'm going to place the back bodies on top of it. I'm going to place the folded edge of the back bodies on the line and I'm going to pin it down because we've taken away five inches from the front bodies the back bodies will be more than the front bodies but when I was drafting the back bodies, I used 24 inches that I have left for the front bodies. I hope you guys understand. Just follow my method. You will get it. So I placed the folded edge of the back bodies on the line of the front bodies on the 5 inches mark. Next, I'm going to pin it down before cutting it out So next I'm cutting the both bodies together. I 
I notch where my side slits will start from and I continue cutting the bodies to the sleeve like so. I'm going to remove the back bodies and continue with the front bodies. I remove the back bodies and I continue with the front bodies. For the neckline for the front, I measured 6 inches. You can use any neck depth of your choice. I measured 6 inches for mine. I use French curve to curve the neckline neatly. Then I cut it out. Next, you measure if you are using facing like mine. You measure from your shoulder to where you want the facing will stop. For example, I measure from my shoulder to my navel. And I impute the measurements on the fabric. After marking on the fabric, next I will take to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew normal stitch from the neckline to where the mark will stop then from there i'll turn the stitch line to the longest stitch and so it loose stitches straight down So from the neckline, I sew normal stitch, I back stitch, I sew normal stitch and stop at where the front facing will stop. At that point, I back stitch multiple times. Then I turn the stitch to number 5, the longest stitch on my machine and I sew loose stitches straight down. I've sewn it guys next I'm going to measure one and a half inches from the neckline I will measure one and a half inches and stop at the mark and I will rule that into a straight line From where the stitch end, I measure 3 inches upward and I mark it. Next, I cut out the SS fabric. Next, I'll open it up. I'll take to my ironing table and open up the seam and give it a very good press. At this point, you will need a steam iron. To iron the fabric very well if you don't have steam iron you can sprinkle water on the fabric you will take your time don't rush at all because this ironing is what we show in front the inverted plates is what we show in front and is going to determine the beauty of the dress so you will take your time 
to iron this part very well. You also iron the right side as well. This is very important. After ironing the back part, you will also iron the right side because you may notice a little fold in front, but you will use the iron to straighten it out, to iron it nice and flat. This will determine the beauty of the inverted plate that you will have in front. If not that I'm fast forwarding it, you will realize that I took my time to iron this part very well. That is why at the end of the sewing, the inverted plate came out very nice. It was very beautiful. This is how it looks after ironing. So at this point, you can either take to your weaving machine to with the rough edges or you will fold it inward and top stitch it either way is fine so i notch the inner part and i cut out the excess a little bit i did the same thing on the other side as well sorry that my hand is covering it So I will take to my ironing table, I'm going to first of all iron it down, I will fold it inward like so, I will take to my ironing table, I will iron it, then after ironing, I will take to my sewing machine and stitch it down, I will repeat the same thing on the other side, then after that, I will fold in it inward and top stitch. I fold in half inch and iron it. I fold it on both sides and iron it. After ironing, I will take to my sewing machine and stitch it down. You can weave these parts as well. As you can see, I fold in half an inch on both sides and iron it. After that, I'll take to my sewing machine, I'll top stitch it on the body. I fold in that part too and iron it. So after ironing, I top stitch on the folded edge.
After that, I conceal it by folding the edge of the inverted pleat inward with half inch and I top stitch it on the bodies. This is how it looks after sewing. This is the right side. Facing will be covering the stitch line. So at this point, I'm going to fold the bodies into two to cut out the facing. measure the stitch line and make sure that when I'm cutting on facing it's going to be wider than the stitch line on the body so that it will cover it up I marked where the stitch line stopped on the facing as well. I measured 10 inches for the wideness at the upper part and the lower part I measured 6 inches so from the 10 inches I slanted to meet the 6 inches Make sure that the length of the facing is longer than the stitch line on the body so that when you are top stitching on the body, when you are top stitching the facing on the bodies, it's going to cover that stitch line. I also cut out facing for the back bodies. After cutting the facing, I'm going to join facing to facing, bodies to bodies, then I will use the facing to turn the neckline of the bodies. I decided to use a square shape for the back bodies. I also measured 10 inches for the wideness. Same with the front, then for the length I measured 6 inches. From the neck depth I measured 6 inches. Square shape. Square 
so i'm going to hang on because of the texture of the fabric for the facing it is light weight so i'm going to iron stay to it after that i'm going to join the facing to facing together at the shoulder then i will join the bodies the front and the back bodies together at the shoulder after that i will use the facing to turn the neckline of the bodies at this point before turning the neckline with facing I use my seam ripper to cut out the loose stitches. I use my seam ripper to cut out the loose stitches. As you are cutting, when you get to where you back stitch multiple times, you will stop. It will be difficult to lose. So at that point, you will know that that is where to stop because when you are sewing the normal stitch, you back stitch multiple times where you stop. Please note, this inverted pleat, you can choose wherever you want the pleat to start from, from your body. Like mine, I made it to start from my navel. Yours can start from the hip or any part of your body you wish it should start from. I actually made this style in two different colors. The second color is a red Mikado fabric. I want to I want to make an embroidery design on the front bodies. I'm going to pose the finished look on my shorts. The inverted plate for the red one, it started from where I want the embroidery design to stop. It is it is um shorter than this particular one. So it means that you can make the inverted plate to start from any length of your choice depending on the design you want to have in front you can make it longer you can make it shorter so for the embroidered design on the inverted plate is not as long as this particular one i'm going to post the finished look of that one on my shorts i've turned the neckline with the facing as you can see and I folded all the hedges inward with half an inch so what I'm doing right now I am placing aiming gum underneath the facing I'm going to iron it down so that it will hold the facing down to the bodies so that by the time I am top stitching on the bodies it won't be moving around so i'm going to iron it after ironing i will take to my sewing machine and top stitch the facing to the bodies after that i'm going to sew my elastic casing i'll pass my elastic through the casing i will sew the sides with one inch seam allowance i will sew the side slits i will hem the down part and that's about it for today's tutorial this is the final look guys we've come to an end of today's tutorial if you find my tutorial helpful please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you've not done so i upload weekly tutorial on my channel also remember to click the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. Until I come your way next, please stay safe and remain blessed. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Bye.